All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to do a little piece now on time ramping, and uh, in Premiere Pro. Uh, first of all, uh, I've got a couple of videos here. One which is uh, a uh, walk with a drone following a circle map pattern. So I'm going to accelerate the drone to move quicker around the the 360 degree walk, and then I've got a hover border here, uh, and um, we're going to slow him down and examine what that does. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to uh, right click on this and go to speed and time duration. And I'm going to start by taking the speed ramping and hitting the speed button and going to 50%. So that'll slow it down. And notice that I have uh, time and tribulation of, of um, frame sampling right here. Um, I can actually zoom in so you can see that. And I'm going to 50%, which will mean that for every frame, I have half as many frames or twice as many frames to slow it down. So if we zoom this back and I play this piece, you'll see it slowed down. And if I um, go in and zoom in quite a bit, let's go into 200%, and I step through frame by frame, you'll see that there's I'm stepping through, and that's a frame, that's a frame, that's a frame, that's a frame. That's a frame. That's a frame. So what's happening here is it's just duplicating frames. So if I go back and play it um, and put it at 100%, but it's at 50% it's playing, it's just being slowed down. So you can see a little bit of a stutter because now what we're doing is instead of 30 frames a second, we're getting 15 frames where every other frame is, was um, being duplicated. So I'm going to change this and go down here to um, speed duration again. And here's this dialog. And so now I'm going to change from frame sampling to frame blending. So what this is going to do is now, once again, I will have um, frame blending. You can see now I need to render this. So let me go ahead and hit return so we can render it. You can already see what's happening here. So I'm going to render it. And this is frame blending. Over here, this is the part that's been rendering. But you can already see that's a frame, that's a frame. That's a frame. That's a frame. So what they're doing is they're blending between frames. So there is duplicate frames, but it gives these artifacts. So when you actually play the piece, you get a little bit of an edginess. See how there's a little double image there? So it's not my favorite mode of working, but it is what we're working with here. So now I'm going to go one more time, right click, go to speed and duration, and I'm going to utilize um, frame optical flow. Now, optical flow should be superior because it should uh, generate out a optical recreation, a little bit like the software Twixter does. Not quite as well as Twixter does, though. Um, so if you really want good slow-mo, you got to go and buy a plugin called Twixter. Um, again, I'm going to change this to 50, so we're getting duplicate frames. Uh, it's not quite letting me do that because of the time frame. So I'm just going to select this. Once again, it's going to need to be rendered. So I'm going to hit return. It's going to render out this piece. It won't take too long. And it'll go back to the beginning and start. So let's just bring it over here. And we'll see the frame blending. It's much, much smoother in slow motion. But you'll see there's a few artifacts like right there. If I zoom in, what's happening is because as he's falling, oh, I want to zoom in, not out. As he's falling, um, he's, let me go to 150. You see his hair there as I go frame by frame. See extra hair, extra hair. It's much smoother than the other one, but now there's an extra board here, right? So it's trying its best to interpret it. And there it has an extra leg in there because there's quite a bit of motion. But overall, when I look at it at normal speed, um, I mean normal size and normal speed, uh, this can tend to look the smoothest as long as you don't get a lot of that right there at the fall. So the question is, which one should I use? Well, you have to choose. Um, if I'm doing duplicate frames, if I'm getting every other frame, and it kind of just depends on how far you want to go. Um, it's much easier to speed up clips. If you speed up clips, it, it, um, takes, it throws clips away. But when you're trying to lengthen it, it has to manufacture clips. Uh, okay, so let's get into how we actually do switch to time ramping. We're going to start with this uh, Desert Phoenix image here. And first of all, when I'm doing time ramping, I want to get all the real estate I can get. I don't have any, any audio here. 
So I really want to be able to get this maximized so I can see what it is I'm working with. Then I'm going to right click in the effect. Either I can right click in the clip and then go down here to where it says show clip time ramping. But I can also right click right on the effects button and go down here to time ramping speed. And what that's going to do is move this rubber band to the middle of the clip uh, or this, this um, control line. Uh, and that's my keyframe line. So what I want to do with this piece is it goes all the way and does a 360 around him here. So we end up at the end back where we started kind of. So I want to start here where he's walking up the hill with the trees off to the right hand side. And I'll get, uh, you know, about a quarter of the way around, third of the way around. Maybe that's maybe about there. And I'm going to put a keyframe here. So the keyframe, that's where change will start. Now, I'm not going to do anything yet with that keyframe. I'm going to come on around here. And so I'm about to another quarter, and I'm going to put it under the keyframe. So now um, these are the keyframes right here. And now if I, um, if I uh, pull up with the timeline, I'm going to accelerate the clip. And if I lengthen it down, I'm going to, I'm going to lengthen the clip. Now, I want to accelerate this one, but if you notice, if I lengthen the clip here, it's going to run into this other clip, and I've now lost my keyframe. Uh, I could, um, you know, do backslash and move this clip out of the way, and then I could recover the rest of this clip, right? I still haven't gotten to that. So I'm at, but I actually was not going to go that direction. I'm going to accelerate this. So I can go up, uh, up to, you know, Here's 160. I'll go 200%. Uh, so we're really accelerating this piece right about there. Uh, okay, so here's my accelerated piece. So now this is what it looks like. It accelerates, and now it really speeds up. And then it slows back down. Now I could accelerate that even more if I want a shorter clip. And uh, and so let me, let me do that. If I hold down this... Shift key, it'll go in five step increments. So I'm going to go up to 300. And I can just keep, I think I can go up to a thousand percent here, but I, that's too fast. So let's try this and just see how this looks. So now I'm going to um, zip around whoosh, so it makes it much faster. I could go a little more, I think. I'm going to hold the shift key again and go up in five second increments up, go up to 400 percent. Oh, let's do it. Let's go to 500%. Okay, so now I've got quite a speed ramp. So here it is, uh, and whoosh, so it zips around, and then it'll slow down again to get when the dog comes in. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. This one, I'm going to do the opposite. Again, I'm going to right-click uh, on this and come down to the ramp speed, right? And now what I want to do with this one is I'm gonna, he, he takes off, and then I wanna slow him down on this these rotations and then speed it up right there. Slow, start, when he starts his rotations after the first rotation right there, I will uh, put a put a keyframe, I put a little earlier, I'm holding down the command key or, or control key, and the other one I'll put right when he starts descending, right about there. So he free falls the rest of the way. Actually, I'll go a little earlier, right about there. So now, whereas the other one I pulled up, this one I'm going to slow down. And notice this will lengthen it. I hold down the shift going, going five percent increases. And I'll lengthen it by, um, let's take it to 30 percent, see how that looks. So now, again, I need to render this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit return, which will render this out. Accelerates up, and now he's really slowing down. Pretty cool. A little bit of artifacting. Now he's going to fall back down and accelerate back up. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that the changes are happening rather rapidly. We go from uh, regular motion to um, fast motion. And these lines here. So now we want to do it about not just adjusting the speed, but about ramping the speed. This is where the ramping comes in. And the ramping is I can take either half of this keyframe. I, I could take the whole keyframe. Well, here, let me just go ahead and take either half. I'm going to pull this half out. Oh, pull this half out. There we go. I should be able to do the same with this half. There we go. And what I'm doing is I'm 
creating a ramp here that will control this a little bit better. And if I um, right click on the, the keyframe, I can get these Bezier curves, which will allow me to um, grab them. There we go. And see it kind of rounds off. Now, if I go too far, I'll, I'll just straighten out the other way, but I'm kind of rounding it off. And I'll do the same thing again, a right click or control click and a Bezier here to round this off. Uh, so now that ramping will happen a little smoother there. So now it's going to go fast and it will slow down kind of gradually. Same thing over here. I'm going to take this half of the ramp, accelerate it over there, this half of the ramp. Notice it does change the speed of the clip, right? And so now I think I went too far with this one. I want to leave that kind of... Uh, so now it's going to gradually slow down. Now it's all in slow motion. And then, and then it's going to ramp back up. Whew. But notice it happened a little smoother. It wasn't quite so, so fast. All right, so I want to just finish up by talking about how to tweak your um, keyframes. So if you have a keyframe, if I grab one part of it, it comes, it comes, it should come apart here. See how they split? But if I want to move an entire keyframe, I hold down the option key and then I can slide the whole keyframe to a new location. Right? There's also keyframes over here. I can slide this one to a new location. Right? Um, the other option um, is if I have multiple keyframes, let me like this, multiple keyframes like this, I can go in the middle and I can move the whole pair of them together. So if I go in between the middle of them, I can move the whole in and out points with the uh, Bezier curves I've created. So if I move this group, I hold the option key to move a pair together. And I just come in between the middle here. Then if I wanted the clip to go backwards, um, there's this uh, feature that I can uh, hold down the command key and drag this. So you can see the arrow is showing me it's going to go backwards. And that little arrow is the backwards section. So it's going to go up and then back down and then back up again in slow motion. Gonna turn around. Now, I haven't rendered this, so it's a little jerky. But if I did, you can see the red line right here. Um, and then he's going to drop back down, return to regular speed rapidly. Cool. Okay, well, that's time ramping for you. Have fun. I think it's a great tool to use. Remember to use it in service of your story. But when you're doing trailers or um, uh, demo reels, it's a great tool for like shortening up the clip or zipping one clip into another or creating kinds of motion that match together. All right. Talk to you soon.